Great. So question six is a parametric equations question. Y at x equals 9t minus ln 9t. Y equals t cubed minus ln t cubed. Show that there is only one value of t for which dy by dx equals 3. And state that value. Um, so actually, this started us off with some fairly tricky differentiation to do with this. We've got... We're going to differentiate this. Now, the first bit's fair enough, isn't it? If you differentiate 9t with respect to t, we know that we're going to get 9. Differentiating the natural log of 9t is one of those ones that sometimes catches people out a little bit. Because actually the 9 adds nothing to this when we differentiate it. The 9 has no bearing on it. Because um, really what we've got, you could think of ln 9t is the same as ln 9 plus ln t using the laws of logarithms that we, we know about. And if you differentiate a number, you get 0. So differentiating ln 9t is the same as differentiating ln t. It just gives us 1 over t. So that's minus 1 over t. And again, if we think about common errors that people will make with that, the most common mistake is that people will end up writing 1 over 9t. The other thing that you could, the other way you could think about it, is that as a kind of chain rule thing, if you differentiate ln something, you get 1 over the something, that's, that's the whole thing, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside bit, and if you differentiate 9t, you get 9. So we could also think of it as being 9 over 9t, which of course cancels down to 1 over t. So either way that you attack it, you get that as your answer. The next one. So we've got a similar problem with a function inside a function of uh, ln t cubed. The first bit's easy enough, divided by dt would be 3t squared. The second bit, this time, we are going to do it with the chain rule. We're going to think of it as being differentiating natural log of something, gives you 1 over the something. And then we multiply by the, the derivative of the inside bit, which is t cubed, which would give us 3t squared, which means that actually what we've ended up with, can you see the t squared cancels with the t cubed? So we end up with minus 3 over t. Now if you've been thinking through this as we've done it, you may also have thought, well hang on, ln t cubed is the same as 3 ln t. And if we differentiate 3 ln t, we get 3 times 1 over t. So again, there are a number of different ways that you can justify arriving at that as your answer when you, uh, when you differentiate it. Uh, we're supposed to be finding dy by dx. So dy by dx is this one divided by this one. And what did the question actually want? Show that there is only one value of t for which dy by dx equals 3 and state that value. So I, I feel uncomfortable leaving that like that, but I'm going to. Evo's crying in pain at me leaving it like that. I, there's, no, there's no need in terms of what the question was. I know, I, I really feel what I'd like to do is put top and bottom over a common denominator of t. So write that as 3t cubed over t, and write that as 9t over t, and then get rid of the denominator because it would cancel out, and that would give me a nicer format. So, so I, you know, it would give me, I'm going I'm to do it just to make you feel better, but it would be, it'd be that, wouldn't it? Which gives me 3t cubed minus 3 over 9t minus 1. Because the, we can cancel out the over t bit as the top and bottom. And that's a much, much nicer form. But the question just said, show that there's only one value for which dy by dx equals 3. So rather than get bogged down in that, I'm going to say if dy by dx equals 3, of 
created a dilemma for myself now because it would be slightly easier to go on with this way of doing it, but I'm, I'm going to insist on doing it from this way. So 3t squared minus 3 over t over 9 minus 1 over t equals 3. At which point we're going to multiply everything by that denominator. Um, can I just do it in one go? 27 minus 3 over t. And actually, you know, we, we might be tempted at this point to say, oh, we've got a scary t on the bottom of our fraction, let's multiply everything by t and sort it all out. But that wouldn't be the right thing to do, really, would it? Look what we've ended up with. We've got minus 3 over t and minus 3 over t. If we add 3 over t to both sides, we get 3t squared equals 27, which gives us t squared equals 9. So t equals plus or minus 3. At which point, under exam conditions, you, you start to get a little bit worried and maybe sweat a little bit more than you were doing. I think um, they, they, they said one value, and, and I've got two. But then you've got to remember, this is good, these values of t are going to work in the, in the original expression that we had up here. And this expression contains natural logs. And natural logs, you're only allowed to put positive values into a natural log. It's not defined for negative values. So t can't be negative in either of them, actually, because that's t cubed. So we can't have a negative value of t. Was it, it was a 9, wasn't it? Okay. Yes. is not defined for t being minus 3, so t equals plus 3 is the only value for which we get 3 as our answer. Um, which I think was the right answer, yes. Um, I'm just checking, I've got the mark scheme here, just wanted to check. Um, oh, they did, they wanted a clear indication of why minus 3 um, was was a, a solution. So um, minus three wasn't a solution. So that you know that's that's quite important that we notice that. Um, there we go, and that's that's that. Is that all right? Any questions about that? That's maths.